Is it a cruise ship? Is it an ocean liner? Is it luxurious? Is it premium? Welcome on board the Queen Mary 2. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I travel all around the world to popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it was like to be there. Nobody pays me to say anything is good or bad. I go where I want to go and I tell it like it is. I have cruised with Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Aida, Mindshift, Costa, MSC, Disney, and Celebrity. And this is my first cruise with Cunard on the Queen Mary 2 and it is just a very short cruise. We boarded the ship yesterday in Southampton and we will be disembarking tomorrow in our hometown of Hamburg, Germany. So if you're expecting an expert opinion of this ship and the Cunard experience, I can't give you that. I'm doing like a micro cruise on this ship, but I wanted to take the opportunity to show you around a little bit what I've seen from the ship and give you a little bit of insight into what to expect if you are also planning to cruise with the Queen Mary 2. I'm currently down in my cabin, which is called a shell sheltered balcony cabin on deck five. There will also be a cabin tour going online. So make sure you subscribe to get a notification when that will go online. And while you're down there, press the thumbs up. It really helps. And in order to make this a little bit easier for you and for me to give you your bearings here on this quite large, very majestic looking ship, I'm gonna use the map of the ship to show you around. So first we're gonna take a look here in the belly of the ship at some of the things down here. Like I said, I can't really show you everything on the ship, but I'm gonna try to give you a general idea. And then at the end, we'll go to, I guess what I would call the spectacular aft of the ship with this cool multi-terraced pool area overlooking the wake. You got me shaking, yeah. called the King's Court is really in the middle of the ship. So it's in the middle and in the middle. And it's divided into strange sort of different sections. There's a, there's a whole stairway and elevator bank in the middle of the buffet. So there's a small part back here and then the main part up here. This is the mini part of the buffet. And if you walk through the stairway in this direction, you get to the main part of the buffet. There are a few different seating areas in the buffet, all with sort of a slightly different vibe. This is the main food area of the buffet, surrounded by the different seating areas. This is the main dining room for us. It's called Britannia, and it's a very large, multi-level, very majestic, uh, traditional style main dining room. You can see how elegant this is, how majestic. I, I guess I'm gonna keep using those words. And something Marcus was saying is that everything is really high quality. Like this is really wood. The silverware on the tables is really silver. But I wouldn't be able to discern this main dining room from the main dining room of many other ships I've been on, Royal Caribbean, some of the older Royal Caribbean ships, for example, that still have this style of dining. Even the newer NCL ships do have large restaurant venues like this, and they are also very nice and very well appointed. There are several bars and lounges on deck three, the tasting room, Sir Samuel's, the chart room, the champagne bar. That's also where the shops and the grand lobby is, this beautiful foyer area and very majestic looking hallways between these venues.
the Golden Lion Pub is directly below the chart room and pretty much has the same footprint but a different kind of decor. They have everything you would expect from an English pub here, including beers on tap. I had not even. By the way, did you know that Cunard has its own beers? Of course, you can come here and get a pint of Guinness, a pint of London Pride, a pint of cider, whatever you like. There is a small selection of pub food as well. This is included in the price of the cruise, and it says it's served all day, but we were in the pub last night and didn't see anybody with any food. Maybe just nobody was hungry. And here we are in this gorgeous grand lobby. Imagine walking down this staircase in your ball gown or your tuxedo. That's what the Cunard experience is about. On one side is the front desk and there's quite a line of people there today because this is the last day of the cruise for, I think, pretty much everybody on board. And opposite the front desk is a small casino. All the NCL ships, all the Royal Caribbean ships, they all have a much larger casino than this, but there are also ships with smaller casinos and the Disney ships that are very similar in design and style to the Queen Mary 2. They have no casino at all. This is one of the grand hallways that I was telling you about with these amazing murals. I've said it for like the 400th time now. There's just something about it that seems very majestic, almost like you're walking through a museum. This mural represents America. You can see we've got Big Thunder Mountain here, Kennedy Space Center, Oregon Trails, and Homer Simpson. America. I swear, I spent about a half an hour walking around the ship trying to find a well-lighted map of the ship in an area where nobody else was. And as soon as I pressed record, this area became Grand Central Station. Let's take a commercial break. Did you get one? What was it about? Write it in the comments below if you wanna. Different to many other cruise ships, the main theater area is not at the very front of the ship. This is where it is on so many other ships. It's actually almost midship called the Royal Court Theater. And there's another venue just in front of that called Illuminations, which is also the planetarium. And they offer seminars and lectures there as well as the planetarium. This is something I wanted to ask you all about. Marcus and I walked through the planetarium later that day when the lights were on, and I was surprised to see that there are a lot of broken seats, and not only are they broken, they're taped off with like electrical tape and warning tape, and some of them are in weird angles, and I feel like this just also does not fit the expectations of a five-star service. I can think of at least two classier looking ways to block off seats so audience members know they shouldn't sit there, or can't they just remove the seats on a less expensive cruise line? I still would feel like this does not look good. Let me know your thoughts about this. Before we go look at this multi-tiered pool area at the back of the ship, I wanted to show you this fantastic, majestic Queen's Room, which is another venue for dancing and live music. Another thing I wanted to show you is the library on the Queen Mary. 
I've seen other ships have like a book corner, but never a large collection of books like this. And another interesting thing is it's quiet in here. Imagine that, a quiet area on a cruise ship nowadays with no music playing. Oh, and check out the signs of wear and tear on those chairs. The multi-leveled pool and outdoor area on the back of the ship is spectacular. Because of its tiered design, it seems it somehow it seems gigantic. And if you start at the top, there's something about it that makes it feel like you could just keep going down and finding another level and then another level. It's a great place to do some people watching or wake watching. And I know that there are some of you out there who love to watch the wake. How are you feeling about the mood and feeling of the decoration though? To me, it seems kind of industrial. For a place where people are spending their vacation, it seems kind of sterile and colorless to me, but it's definitely functional. At the very top of this back area of the ship is the famous kennel. Yeah, you can bring your dogs or cats on a cruise on the Queen Mary. Are there any other cruise ships that allow that anymore? I know on our transatlantic crossing on the Norwegian Epic, there were some people with emotional support animals, but I think that might be done. The rest of the top deck is mostly taken up by wide open spaces that I assume are used for parties when the weather is nicer. Look at this big open space of, at the moment, nothing. This reminds me of the front part of the top deck of the Norwegian Epic as well. Moving closer toward the front of the ship and up one more deck, there's another huge area of nothing. If you've ever cruised with this ship and have seen this space used for something, please let me know. There's also a small indoor pool area with upgraded pool chairs, and this area does give me a five-star vacation feeling. This pool, however, just like the other pool in the outdoor area, was they were not in operation for our cruise, but it was so short, I didn't have time to go swimming anyways. There are more areas of the ship. There are other dining rooms, there are bars, there are lounges and corners that I didn't show you here. Like I said, I'm not an expert about this ship. I've, I've not even spent 24 hours on this ship yet. And in 24 hours, I will be leaving. So I, I would need a little bit more time to give you an expert in-depth tour of everything on the ship. But let's be honest, you don't really need to see every nook and cranny to know if the ship is going to be for you or not, or to help you get a little bit of orientation for when you arrive, right? There are other ship tours here on this channel. There are cabin tours, there are food tours. There's not just cruise ship videos, but there are a lot of cruise ship videos on the very unofficial travel guides. And if you like stories about things going right and very wrong on traveling, check out my book. It's called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship, full of true stories of fortunate and unfortunate things that have happened to me around the world. It's available on Amazon now. And in just a couple days, the next video from this ship experience will be coming online. So I hope to to see you then. Bye-bye. It's about a million degrees in here.